I'm here on the range at uh, SMM3G 2015 with the uh, Miller brothers, Eric and Kurt. And we're going to talk about some of the history behind uh, three gun and the advancement of shotgun loading techniques. How long have you guys been shooting three gun? We started in 1995 at the Soldier of Fortune match, and that match had been already going on for 10 years, but we met quite a few people that had been doing it a lot, like uh, the late, great Eddie Rhodes, and uh, got a lot of tips from him and, and uh, stuff like that. It was a very uh, practically driven match, if you will, tactically driven match. They were very much into the soul, or, uh, you know, military and law enforcement uh, client clients, things like that. For, yeah, tactical application of the gun. Like, yeah. for instance, on pistols, you couldn't have a brightly colored uh, magazine extension. They found them offensive, and you couldn't run them. Or if you did run them, they made you wrap them with uh, duct tape so they didn't see the bright colors. <laughs> right. So quite a different rule set from what we have today. Not, not a huge different rule set, just a different way to come at it. Uh, for instance, they allowed optics, but it was only certain ones that were certified in military use. So you wouldn't see all the different one to sixes we had. It was like an ACOG that was approved. Or, Pretty much uh, ACOGs or the old Colt 4X scope. Right. Uh, and uh, they added Augs. a few toward the end uh, of scopes, but they had to be soldier of fort uh, deemed soldier of fortune battle worthy scopes. Right. <laughs> so it was it was all with the with the with the practical application of a firearm in mind, not playing a game with a gun. So what were your shooting backgrounds before you got into uh, competing at those earlier matches? Well, I had shot uh, junior small bore, uh, some high power, uh, and we had both gone to gun sight and taken several classes there. Uh, so we came at it from a practical background and application of it. Uh, and a matter of fact, uh, two of the instructors we had at gun sight were the, two of the guys that put on Soldier Fortune, Mike Wadelich and Mike Horn. And they always kept saying, you guys need to come, you guys need to come. And we finally did and said, this is this is heaven. You get to run around with a gun and shoot it all over the desert. It was fabulous. <laughs> so, what eventually uh, brought you to the uh, Superstition Mountain Mystery Three Gun Match? Because that one's been running since about uh, the mid '90s as well. '95 is when they had their first. Uh, we missed the first one. Uh, it was actually a lot of the Denver police guys that that shot Soldier Fortune. They said, "There's another one like Soldier Fortune in Mesa, Arizona, and it's at the first of the year instead of the end of the year." So what were some of the differences when you went from SOF to SMM3G? The, the, the biggest one was we had never been able to walk stages before. When we first got to Superstition Mountain Mystery 3-Gun and we could actually walk these stages, we went, you can, you, you can actually go and, and, and see where the targets are and stuff. And go plan it. And go plan it. <laughs> because Soldier of Fortune was very much uh, big on the uh, semi-surprise stage. Shooters were not allowed forward of this tape until it was your turn to shoot. There were many targets you couldn't see. You could always kind of get an idea of where they were, but you couldn't see them. And amazingly, you would, you would be amazed at how many people without that walkthrough background couldn't do as well at Soldier of Fortune. It, it, they would almost like fall down. It was like a, you really had to kind of fall back on whatever skills you had to do well at Soldier of Fortune because there was no such thing as a walkthrough, where to put your foot, where to reload, things like that. Basically those formats uh, forced you to be more mentally adaptable to whatever circumstance you faced then. Oh absolutely. I guess you, you know, could you, say you that. You had yes. to make it up on the fly. <laughs> whereas, whereas here you got to plan it. Now both are straight, just a blast. But it's a different flavor. Now I understand you guys ran a couple of matches under SOF rules. Um, How did you take it over, and uh, what was that like? Oh well, Bob Brown was in a big divorce, uh, and he knew he was going to be losing a lot of money, and he was very tired of Las Vegas. Basically, for lack of a better word, he always said, "Yeah, they're screwing me," because Bob never planned anything. He'd always do it at the last minute. Well, you can always get it done at the last minute in Las Vegas. But it's going to cost. It's going to cost. And so he was really mad that they were overcharging him. I'm going to move this thing. So he moved it to Raton, uh, where his costs were minimal. He's on the NRA board. It's the NRA Whittington Center. So his costs went way down to put on the match. Uh, and that's when we took over the match. Because Johnny. Because the problem was yeah. his California crew, that was too far for them to go to New Mexico and right. set it up. And so. Uh, and before that, they had kind of divorced themselves from Soldier of Fortune and became the World Championship three-gun match. And it was the same crew from California that ran that. So Soldier of Fortune kind of morphed into that. And then the one that we said, hey, we should have a real Soldier of Fortune match, 
and uh, Bob Brown uh, said, oh, that's a good idea, and we actually approached him about uh, being the crew for that, and uh, that's how we ended up doing the last one that was the magazine uh, okayed match in in, in Raton, New right. Mexico. So after you guys ran the uh, officially sanctioned SOF match, uh, what became of it after that? Well, Bob Brown ran out of money. Like I mentioned, his divorce. He, the divorce was finalized, and she basically cleaned him out. So he had no money to put on a match. And Eric and I and Blaine West and Jimmy Holdsworth already had Rocky Mountain Three Gun going as a local entity. And we thought, hey, why let a good thing stop? Let's go ahead and just keep going. So we, we contacted the Whittington Center and we knew how to get insurance after having worked with the uh, Soldier of Fortune folks. And, uh, and, and I, I would say the other thing about Soldier of Fortune is this was just after uh, 2001 and Bob Brown really wanted to devote the magazine to the War on Terror. So he felt that the match would be a distraction as well. Uh, remember, I mean, oh, yeah, no, that was, that. that was a large part and of it. And so we took basically a year off, and I said, you know, we could do something like that. We could resurrect this match. And uh, the very first one we ran at the at the Whittington Center was the Rocky Mountain Three Gun match, and really about the only uh, uh, difference that we had from Soldier of Fortune is for the first time we allowed uh, open class because we knew there were a lot of open class shooters from places like Superstition Mountain, uh, Mystery Three Gun, that would want to come to a match like that. Right, and we opened up to any optic you wanted to run, and, uh, change the shotgun rules somewhat. Right, right. And, uh, and, then, uh, and then Eddie Rhodes actually invented the He-Man class, and so we offered the He-Man class at Rocky Mountain. And what was He-Man as uh, originally intended? As originally intended, as what Eddie Rhodes wanted, is he wanted uh, people shooting major caliber handgun, major caliber rifle, major caliber, what he called 12 gauge shotgun. It never really uh, was supposed to be pump action only or iron sights only. He really kind of uh, chastised us for, for how that actually came out because his background was law enforcement and he just said, you know, this, this would be a class for guys running full size 45 automatics, uh, 12 gauge uh, shotguns and uh, major caliber 308 rifles. Right. And he really didn't care whether they, you know, whether the rifle didn't have an optic or not. He just wanted it to be a basically a major caliber class. So obviously, equipment has advanced uh, a lot over the years through the uh, development and R and D cycle in action shooting sports. What are some of the biggest changes you guys have seen over the the time frame you've been involved past 20 years? So the, the biggest changes I've noticed are variable power scopes and a low power range, one to six power. Uh, the other thing I've noticed that changed substantially is all sorts of different ways to hold a shotgun shell. Uh, pistol, pistol magazines, uh, rifles really haven't morphed that much. They seem to have gotten shorter. But the basic gear people are using is very similar to what was used back in, like, say, 2000. Except now we have variable power scopes, you know, one to sixes, one to seven and a halfs, and, and shotgun ammunition holding devices. I looked back at some old videos from SMM3G from 1999, 2000, and the thing that struck me was that basically there's more purpose built stuff available today, where back then people were kind of cobbling things together. They went to a local gunsmith and cut a carry handle off and added a rail to the top of their upper, or they, they added their own rail to their free flow tube, that sort of thing. Right. So what do you guys think about now? There's a much more variety of purpose-built equipment available for the sport. Oh, absolutely. I mean, like any sport, they've, they've built for the sport. They've built to the sport. So uh, you get all kinds of, uh, you know, different kinds of magazine holders and belt systems. I mean, you know, in Soldier of Fortune, there was no such thing as an inner and outer pistol belt system, yeah, pretty much. Exactly. Uh, the way they made you roll around in the dirt and so forth, that, that would come off pretty darn quick. So, and, the you know, like the Bianchi inner and outer belt systems, uh, you know, a lot of purpose-built gear, and, like any sport really, that comes along. Really, you can say it's purpose-built, but all the inner and outer pistol belts, all your magazine holders, stuff like that, really are using something from another sport, which was USPSA pistol, and morphing it to work for three gun. I wouldn't say there's a purpose-built three gun belt, because people are still buying a CRC speed belt, and then adding all the carrier keepers and everything else, like the ELS system. But all those systems really have come from USPSA to hold a pistol in magazines. 
Uh, the only true purpose-built gear I'm seeing are, say, rail sections on four ends. So you can add like a light if you have a night stage, things of that nature. Uh, but really, we're still at the point in three gun outside of variable power optics and shotgun shell holding devices. I would say we're still using gear that was designed somewhere else and we're making it work with gun, just like we did back in 2000. Which matches today do you think are closest in uh, spirit to the original SOF three gun? Blue Ridge Mountain's probably the closest. Uh, and then, uh, oh, what's the big one that Tar Heel puts on back east? Um, can't think and, of, and, name of it. And, and understand that none of the known major matches right now ever uh, ever use the uh, semi surprise stage format like Soldier of Fortune did. But but as far as uh, you know, running and gunning, I mean, I think there's several matches that kind of still have the flavor of Soldier Fortune. Even Superstition Mystery Mountain Three Gun has you know that flavor. You know, with uh, uh, purpose-built stages for uh, scenarios and things like that. I mean, Dan has gone a long way with his uh, minor and burrow uh, motifs for all yeah. these matches and then uh, putting in, uh, like, this one is Back to the Future based and things like that. So, uh, and Soldier of Fortune did the same thing. I mean, all their scenarios were... Uh, given military type names but they were always like scenario based uh, get to the chopper or uh, you know save the colonel or you know things like that take, you know. take ammunition over to a machine gun pit right you know, things like that, that. Nature, so. so how long do you guys think you're going to keep shooting three gun now that you're 20 years into the sport <laughs> oh I'll, yeah i'll keep going for, for as long shooting. as i can i mean i'll keep shooting as, as much as, as I long can. as your body supports you and you can be out here doing it right right yeah Absolutely. As long as they continue to make Lee jeans in my size, I'll, I'll you know, <laughs> I'll continue. All right, guys. Well, it's been great talking to you. Uh, thanks for your time and good luck at the match.